Hello, my name's John Longcroft Neal and I am the author of a book called Cursive Handwriting for Adults published by Ulysses Press and this video is to accompany that book. I've put some of these other things in another video but I thought I'd just make a short video to demonstrate some of the things in the book because they're much better seen in video rather than trying to read them and describe them that way. Um, if you haven't got the book, then it, follow the link below and you can get go and treat yourself to it. But you may be here because you've got the book already, which is great. And so I'll go through some of the ideas that are in the book, just the introductions really. I won't go through the whole lot. Uh, some of the main points about the rhythm and the speed and the way that you would uh, do the handwriting. Okay, so let's press on. Well, first things first. Um, the paper I'm using is just regular print paper. You don't have to use anything that's too elaborate. Like anything like this will really do fine. Um, you can get some very smooth paper which is difficult to use because the pen or pen should just slip off it. Secondly, I'm only going to use for most of this is a pencil. I have got another pen here which is a, a drawing pen, uh, 0.8 of a millimetre, um, which is very nice. I've also got, of course, my uh, italic pen, which is this one with the square nib, which is lovely, but I'll show you some of that in a minute. But mostly, you can do all this with a pencil. Now, one of the most important things is the, the way that you hold the pencil. That you can hold it in various ways. People do this and this and this. I definitely prefer this, three fingers around the, the pencil, and that's really the best way of doing it. You can get away with other ways, but that's the main thing. Uh, that I don't want you to do is to crunch your fingers up. It's not finger writing like this. That's where you just use the fingers and you end up doing sort of this sort of stuff and it goes tight and, and the, with very little rhythm. You, I want you to hold the pencil this far from the point and have it so that it sort of hinges from your wrist and a little bit from your elbow too so the whole lot runs together and before you do any of that of course you've got to sit well you've got to sit with your arms on the table and your feet down now let's just show this picture which i have here courtesy of my friend Vic broadfield nice to sit in with your arms on here grip like this and feet on the floor don't be sitting down cross-legged or <laughs> anything odd like that. The paper I'm using for the moment is this line paper which is in the book. It, you can see it's 14 millimetres from these lines here. Uh, four mil at the top, six mil in the middle. Let's put mil. And 14 mil, uh, four mil at the bottom. And there's an angle of 65 degrees. This is only a guideline paper. You don't need to use it. But it's useful to start off with and the book is full of all these pages that you can use so you can easily go along them and use them like this right okay so you're holding the pencil correctly you're sitting correctly and you're not holding it too loosely and the first thing i want you to, to get right is this rhythm the rhythm in which we write and i've drawn a little car and the car has got two wheels that look like that 
okay that's the and it's going that way because when you draw these wheels you would naturally from this angle I'm sorry I'm not referring to left-handed people though it is quite possible to do left-handed but that's for another time the, the curve of the wheel leans forward and it leans forward roughly at that 65 degree angle and by doing so you then can form A, B, C, D they all have this wheel shape in E would fit in there as well one of the things I'd like to demonstrate on video is the speed at which you write because and the speed and the rhythm it's not laboriously slow but it's not very quick but there's a sort of um, a feel to each because when you do a pattern let's say like this it's not like this or tense and uh, but it's a more of a flick controlled flick likewise if we do a big letter U or maybe connected F's let me do a V shape notice it's, it's more of a, a flick down rather than a definite line all the way along so when you do that you tend to get um, a more of a, a, a consistent and uh, rhythmic stroke so if you practice these O's and then A and then the B all fit in the C, the D the E you notice on the E this is, shows the rhythm really because the curve of the E is the main part I do one and then round one and then you'll see there's a slight pause I suppose with the letter A you can almost hear the pencil going Can see the rhythm which goes around there down and then just flick up this rhythm is important to get this right and it's it's nice to stop between each of the letters as you do this so let me just write that Before I move on to some plain paper, I'm going to use this pen and uh, show you the American cursive style. I think it's called New American Cursive Style, and this is what is generally taught in American schools. But the same principles ap apply. Hold the pen a certain way, get the rhythm right, and get the slope consistent. So if I was to write, this is New American Style, I think it would look like this. And if uh, you want to start with this, which is probably what you might have been taught in America, then that's absolutely fine. Then I will now 
show you what is the sort of style that I would probably use in this book and I sort of move over from one to the other. I'll stick with this pen. It's very similar but not so many joins. So let me put this. This is my style of writing. has fewer joints and I'm going to get my famous italic pen with a square nib and let me carry on and put and can even explain the italic nib you can see that the end of the nib is square it's not pointed so that when you do a line that way it goes thin and that way it goes thick and that's the angle that you always need to hold it so when you do a capital A it goes thin and thick and then a horizontal or vertical line would be neither one nor the other a V would go thick and then thin and correspondingly, if you do a letter S, it rather beautifully goes um, thick when you go in that direction and thin when you go in that direction. So that's why um, italic nibs were used, because they produce quite a nice sh uh, shape to some of the, le the letters. Right, I'm going to move away from this paper and go freehand, because really that's the next stage. You don't need lines. Um, I'll stick with the pencil for a moment. I just want to talk about the joins. People think that cursive means everything is joined up. I'm not hung up on this. Some people say that's not cursive because it's not joined. So I might write like this. T I stop there and do the S differently. And so they're not all joined together. For me that's not vitally important, but I know most people have learned that to start with and you may want to stick with it. But it's uh, it's not really printing printing, because printing would be, and some people think this is babyish to go, and that is, but this is joined as and when, let's put it that way. So let me write that. Join the... letters as and see I took off there I didn't join because you've got to go from there up to there on the D and if you're going to write the word and and go all the way over to there that's a bit of a so I find it just as easy to do that so there is in fact no join there that should have joined with that join the letters as and when you like. Let me just do that with joins. When you like. And with a, an American style, you'd have a loop in there as well, so you'd have... And uh, if you like that, stick with it. But um, my preferred style in the end does not have those loops in. So the word like would just be straight. It can be that these things come, uh, can be a little bit illegible if you're not careful. I have two more things I'd like to show you. And I use this fountain pen, which has got, as you can see, a pointed nib. 
because I'm not going to make use of it other than just to make some straight marks. The first one is flourishes and the flourishes just long sweeping tails and decorative parts mostly to capital letters so flourishes and let's see let's start with I'll just show you the speed at which they happen rather than go through the whole alphabet so if I start with A there's lots of things like this that you can do which make them a bit more elaborate so if you're going to write somebody's name now the D I can either be just straight or I can even make that into a flourish as well let me try the letter B there's a number of ways this can happen Let's try over the top. Make sure that the top is smaller and the bottom bigger. It looks better that way. Or you can make the B come in at the top that way. C doesn't have much, so I'll just show you D. And we can do D. Like that, or possibly from the top. So if you're going to do an address maybe to write the name with a big um, flourish like that and the name of the street I think it looks pretty nice. Right finally just show you some shadings of uh, capital letters. Another way you can make the capital letter, the first letter, um, fairly elaborate and with the pen I showed you before that was thin and that became thick. So I'm going to draw it this time with just a straight nib. So if a letter A would look like that. And because this is a uh, regular ink it will stay wet for a moment. If I put a blob there and then just hopefully get this right just slide it down and you get quite a... so Alfred might look like that and Belinda, let me just do this one as well. So to make that top edge wet and then just smudge it with your finger. A little bit there, see if we can do that bit there. And the C would look pretty good. So put it in there. I'll finally do an E do a couple of flourishes on this one L is uh, let's So thanks for buying my book, Cursive Handwriting for Adults. And if you haven't bought it, treat yourself. Well, uh, thanks for watching and I hope that helps. And uh, if you haven't bought the book, uh, by all means go and follow the link below and it's available from Amazon and probably other places too. Um, right, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and join my merry band of subscribers and also hit the little bell and then you get notifications of any more stuff that I might put forward. Right, okay, thank you very much for watching and happy handwriting. Bye-bye.